take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Violin. Valentin Renko, Memoirs of a Spy, Chapter 14, First Draft. One of the more enjoyable aspects of my work is that no two assignments are ever exactly the same. One day I might be trailing a miscreant through the city's back alleys and mean streets, and the next hobnobbing with an entirely different breed in Berlin's finest hotel. Which is more gratifying depends on many factors, not the least of which is whether I can say at the end of the case, and they lived happily ever after. Okay, Doc, all clear, let's go. Don't call me Doc ever again, Shanley. And put on a tie. Whatever you say, Dr. Henry. I'm gonna need a few moments to close up this file. Inside registry. Just come along quietly, lady. It just doesn't seem possible that she hasn't paid any taxes since 1968. The Baroness has powerful friends in high places. Besides, as far as I can tell, she always paid out the exact amount due. She just didn't send the money to the government. Where did she send it to, then? You know, her favorite causes. The Greens, the anti-nuclear movement, the National Committee for the Arts. That's very admirable, but it doesn't change the fact that if we don't come up with a sizable first payment by next week, they're going to seize her estate. Are you sure she doesn't know anything about this? Pretty sure. Since I started transferring all her financial records onto computer disks, she asked me not to bother her with financial trivia. So I brought it to you first. Uh, hey, guys. What's going on? Mitch, I told you to stay away from the customers and me until you're over that cold. Oh, don't worry about it, Mac. The contagious period of this cold is completely... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll just clean up around those front tables. <clears throat> Where are you going? The International Symposium on Surveillance and Optics opens this morning. 
I want to be there for the first lecture. Saka acoustical blood spatter analysis using the turbo hydrogen mass re-separator. High tech spy gadgetry. All the latest on the one roof. I've dreamt of nothing else for weeks. Rudy, one of these days we're gonna have to have a long talk. Oh, welcome, Dr. Henry. Can you sign, please? Your room is 247. It is you, the famous Dr. Dorian Henry. I'm so honored. Thank you. However, I'm certainly not famous. Outside a very small circle, at any rate. Oh, no. In my country, we recognize your genius. I have patterned all my research in optical flux rotation on the models you created. You are a researcher in micro-optics? <laughs> Only in a very small way. <laughs> <laughs> A poet once wrote that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Based on my own experience, truer words were never spoken. Wars have started, nations have crumbled, and credit card limits far exceeded, all in the name of love. Oh, hell. Your wife's in the fur shop. What? Maybe we can continue our little talk later. Excuse me. Would you two try to remember where we are? This is a convention of frickin' spies. There's too much at stake to blow it now. Yeah, you're right. Where is she? That way. She saw you talking to that Russian broad. She already had her charge cards out. What the hell did you let her go in there for? Because I can't be in two places at once trying to keep both of you out of trouble. I'm gonna have to bring in some backup. Oh, top of the morning to you, Mitch. Wonderful day to be alive, isn't it? You call this living? I'm dying here. I'm racked with fever. I got a monster head cold, and I can't stop. <coughs> Gesundheit. What do you need? A couple of aspirins, a cup of cocoa, and a day in bed. You working as a wet nurse now, Renko? Oh. Do my eyes deceive me, or is it Nick Shanley, late of the Central Intelligence Agency, bringing down any small banana republics lately? No, I didn't think so. Up yours, Rink. Oh, and still the razor wit, eh? Mitch, you're right. It's not such a great day after all. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. Where's Willie Richter? I don't know. He's a writer somewhere. Nick Shanley. Actually wearing a tie. Yeah. Ain't life a bitch. For some people, more than others. So what brings you back to Max? I need some help on a job. How's the pay? Don't you even want to know what the job is first? Actually, Valentin, the Baroness is in some serious financial straits. And I know we're both anxious to do whatever we can to help her. Isn't that right? Well, speak for yourself, but, uh... Yeah, all right. What's the job? It's bodyguard work. And who is he? He's my problem. His better half is yours. Dorian, I have to get out of here before I start climbing the walls. Well, Shanley said to wait in the room until he came back. Shanley's a pencil neck geek. Are we his prisoners or what? I need some air. I promise not to leave the hotel, okay? Fine. Just go and leave me in peace. I need to finish this presentation. That's right, Trisha, dear. I took all your money and credit cards out of your purse. How dare you? Oh, I don't know. I think it had something to do with the fact that you were about to charge a 40,000 mark ermine line jogging suit. Have fun. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen and spies. Pause for chuckles. I'm Dr. Dorian Henry from Cambridge University. Wait for applause. I came here tonight to introduce a micro-optics design so new and so innovative that even my wife's impressed with me. And that's no mean feat, I can assure you. Pause. For more chuckles. In the spy game, the most disquieting prospect for any agent is dealing with an amateur. 
The reason is quite simple. Amateurs are almost always driven by emotion. Greed, anger, or worst of all, love. The end result is an unpredictable opponent, and that makes him dangerous. the first floor, but after that he bounced off a canopy, hit a flagpole, fell onto a terrace, rolled over the edge, slid down a drain pipe, dropped into a garbage bin, and limped away. What the hell is going on in here? Who are they? They're my backup. Where's your wife? She went out. She said she wouldn't leave the hotel. Unbelievable. Lock the door. Don't let anybody in. I'll be right back. You two, come with me. I can see how valuable the camera might be in the spy game, but I'm sure the industrial application of the basic micro-optics will far surpass that. All I know is we got it and they want it. Uh, excuse me, but who are they? Take your pick. My job is to make sure they don't succeed. Yours is to keep a lid on the doc's wife. Checking out the diamond trinkets. She seems harmless enough. So does a sleeping scorpion. She's the ultimate loose cannon, really intelligent, totally unpredictable, and she doesn't want protection. Perhaps she just doesn't want it from you. Oh, right. The great Russian lover. Women swoon at his approach. Oh, please, not while we're on the job. <laughs> One other thing. She likes to shop with or without money. I gotta go sweep the room where the doc's giving his presentation tonight. She's expecting you. Have fun. You're the guy Shanley hired. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm having a really bad day, so just leave me alone. Don't follow me. Don't even breathe the same air I do, okay? Mr. Shanley was only concerned for your safety after what happened in front of the hotel. Shanley's delusion. Leave it to us. It's no problem. There we are. Thank you very much. It's very kind. Bye-bye. Thank you very much Thank for your you. assistance. Bye -bye. Yes, goodbye. Uh, now look, I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation, but... Uh, Willie! Uh, Willie! Who is this? Hello, Dr. Henry. Damn it, Hansen. You're in Berlin, aren't you? It was you and that idiot brother of yours outside the hotel this morning. I should have known. Look, why don't you just give it up? We want what's rightfully ours. We want the credit that's due to us. You're both crazy. You've got what's due you, which is nothing. Now, you stay away from me and my wife, or I'll have you both committed. Talk to us now, or we're going to the press and the International Academy of Science. Go ahead. Who do you think they'd believe? I'm warning you, Dr. Henry. Next time... 
You're going to be sorry you ever looked through a microscope, Dr. Nobel Laureate Henry. Damn it, Hanson. I told you to stay away. Hello, Dr. Henry. I'm so sorry to bother you, but I really do need your help with my flux rotator problem. May I come in? Well, actually, I am... Um... It'll just take a moment. Well, just a moment, then. What a lovely suite. Is that the bedroom through there? Yes, but... Uh... Please, could you just take a quick look at my project schematics? Just a quick look. I have heard about your great reputation for acting as mentor. Uh, one does what one can. Ah, oh, champagne. It's compliments of the Grand Hotel. Now, wait a minute, there appears to be a mistake. These appear to be architectural drawings. No mistake. Please tape your mouth shut, Doctor. That's the doc's briefcase. Falls, intelligence operatives will reflexively gather round in support, knowing full well that it could just as easily have been oneself. But when Shanley got nicked in that most ignominious of places, well, somehow the normal rules of decorum just didn't seem to apply. Oh, God, take it easy, meatheads. Oh. All right, Shanley, take care. Oh, don't worry, I'll be back. You just find that broad, will you? Because if anything happens to the doc when I'm gone, it's your ass. Well, actually, it's yours. Ha ha. <laughs> easy, easy. Easy. Hey, hey, I'm bleeding here. Hey, wh where are you guys taking me? Hey, where are you guys taking me? Hey, I want a private hospital and an American doctor. And the dish is sensitive enough to pick up any designated radio transmission up to a distance of 700 meters. Uh, Rudy, I've heard just about enough of the fantastic features of your mini parabolic radio signal tracking disc. And could you take off those glasses? They make you look like a surprised frog. Oh, all right. Uh, did I show you my new selenium crystal chronograph? It has an 8-byte computer chip, built-in decoder, 11 times on display, and listen, a pulsar signal device. <laughs> Get out of here, you bureaucratic idiots. I told them her name was Raisa Davidovich. The little one asked me if it was spelled with an A or an O. Idiots. Well, they're just trying to do their jobs. I'm paying you to take care of my interests. Kindly of remember that in future. Yes, of course. Oh, Dorian. Love. Leave me alone. You know, you really should get this camera ring sized. It's too tight. How did you get that? Give it to me. Oh, relax, Dorian. It's OK. I was so mad when I left before I was going to sell it, but I couldn't get it off my finger, so I just snapped a couple of pictures instead. You know, there's some real weirdos. Ow! That hurts! Um, uh, shouldn't you use a bit of soap? Shut up! <laughs> you. You don't want to do that. <clears throat> on the damn thing! By the way, love, I found my credit cards. It's all right, Willie, I'll go. I'm not sure I'll ever marry, Willie. Dr. Henry, your wife was right. Relax. You got your ring camera back. Yes, but not my schematics. They were on a diskette inside my briefcase. Without them, the camera is ultimately useless. You only had one copy? Yes. Well, can't you do the presentation without the schematics? 
Well, I could give a demonstration, yes, but that's not the reason I came here. The Surveillance and Optics Symposium is an internationally sanctioned scientific body. Once I present before its members, my copyright and patent rights become irrefutable. And to do that, I need those schematics. I see. Why don't you get that diskette back for me? You go on in less than three hours. I'll double my rate. All right, we'll try our best. What about your wife? I'll just get that disc. Rudy, I got the feeling we need reinforcements. I want to run over to Max Cafe. Valentin made the call from the lobby. They're already in place. Ah, Give me hand, sir. No, I'm fine. I, I insist. Back off before I call the old grinder. The other thing I've noticed about amateurs over the years is that at times their will is absolutely indomitable, their courage truly admirable, and their good sense totally lacking. Here, a case in point. After a spectacular fall out of a third floor hotel room window, any reasonably sane professional operative would take a step back to reconsider his objectives and most likely determine a flaw in his overall plan. But, as in this instance, a layman will often just put his head down and charge forward like a bull in pursuit of the elusive red cape. The major difference being that in the ring, the bull never gets hold of the matador's sword. Yes, without question, when weapons of any sort fall into the hands of a novice, the result is almost always imminent disaster. Ah, thanks for coming, Mac. Not at all. It's the least we could do for the Baroness. As it turns out, I know the hotel manager rather well. No. Uh -huh. Where from? We worked together during the airlift, hunting down black marketeers. Do you miss it, Mac? I don't think about it. Like the great Satchel Page once said, don't ever look back, something might be gaining on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, Mac, uh, who's Satchel Page? Never mind. I believe the young lady you're looking for is right over there. Thanks. How did you find me here? Oh, a process of simple elimination. All the shops are closed. Uh, can I sit down? Thank you. Oh, just coffee, please. And another bottle of bubbly. Your husband was quite rough on you upstairs. Don't patronize me. That wasn't my intention. <clears throat> you know, I could always go back to my acting career. I'm sure you were very good. Good? I was damn good. I toured with the best repertory company in Europe for almost two years. That's very impressive. Yeah, and I gave it all up for Dr. Strangelove. Um, Real dumb. You know, Trisha, there are a lot of choices out there in the world. It's up to you. Don't be nice to me. I don't like it. Well, perhaps you better ask yourself if there's anything in life you do like. Other than shopping, that is. Don't I hear your partner calling you? Willie? No. He's quite self-sufficient. I bet he's out there now with a full-scale plan on how to flush out the thieves. This will never work, Richter. And what makes you think they're even watching? Oh, they're watching. I'm certain of it. There are eyes everywhere. The spring bouquet, my personal favorite, to brighten the hospital room of a sick friend. But of course, if you really want to say I love you, there's only one choice. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, I'm Dr. Dorian Henry. Ah, the famous scientist and inventor. How may I help you? I'd like to put this briefcase in the hotel safe. It contains my presentation materials. Of course, right through this door. And, um, don't worry, your valuable briefcase will be safe in our safe. 
I will see to it personally. Please. Yes, You know, Rudy, I've never in my whole career had a chance to say this before. Let's synchronize watches. Exactly 501, now. Um. <laughs> now we'll just wait a bit to sell our story and then we'll see what happens. Just a moment, Doctor. Huh? Oh, thank you. Yes, sir? Single red rose, please. Only one? Cheapskate. Take it to your working on commission. A girl's got to make a living. I think I've seen our Russian friend. How long ago? About 15 minutes. By the way, is there a finder's fee if we retrieve the diskette? Of course. Oh, the spring bouquet, my personal favorite to brighten the hospital. There's a chance we're in luck. Uh, Risa is maybe still in the hotel. What makes you think that? Oh, I have spies everywhere. Oh, by the way, when you see your wife, perhaps this might help. Oh, excuse me, Valentin. My husband just walked in, and there's something I need to do. I'd like your best table, and uh, I don't have time to wait. Of course, Dr. Henry. And let me add how honored we are to have you here, sir. Dorian, have a drink. On me. Uh, uh, this way, Doctor. So, Willie, it's your turn again. I'll look after Dr. Henry. <laughs> by the way, uh, if we find Racer in the diskette by tonight, it's double our fee. safe. Now. I'm not sure I remember the combination exactly. Painting Colonel Peterson. Painting Colonel Peterson. Do you really want to die for minimum wage? It's coming back to me. Gun down. Let him go. You don't tell me what to do. You move away now. Go ahead. Shoot him. What are you saying? I'm saying that if you shoot him, I'll take you down right away. You lose. You don't have a leg to stand on. One more step and he dies. Go ahead. Try me. Don't do this. Now, who are you? Lady, you fight me one more time and so help me. Gesundheit. Thank you. Herbert? Is that you? to explain. You know him? Yes, we worked in rep together. King Lear and Camelot. I was Guinevere. And I was your Lancelot. <laughs> do you remember how wonderful it was? I do. I do. I'm sorry to interrupt this tender reunion, but uh, I'd really like an explanation, Herbert. 
You know I loved you, Tricia. And it broke my heart when you married that arrogant swine. But I was determined to get over it. Forget about you. I never could. It nearly drove me mad. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I decided on one final desperate act. To steal the evil knight's grail. Prove my worthiness to my lady love. And thereby win back her heart. And just maybe sell the grail to the highest bidder later on. <laughs> Gesundheit. Gesundheit. I'm not interested in the money. Will you come back to me, Guinevere? I can't, Herbert. You are the dearest, sweetest knight I've ever known. But I'm not sure I love anyone anymore. <sighs> Sir, shoot me. My life is over. I don't think so, Herbert. But you'll have to come with me. Where are you going to take him? Not to the police. I mean, look at him. He has to be reported. He committed armed robbery, assault, and kidnapping. Then I'm coming with you. Herbert is the gentlest man who ever lived. I'll explain it all to them. They'll hang the poor bastard for sure. It was at this point that I decided to call on one of my old KGB comrades, Nikolai Rostov, to see if I could get a line on Reza Davidovich. Unfortunately, Nikolai still hated my guts due to a small misunderstanding over a beautiful Lithuanian double agent some years back. But the promise of a full case of Mac's finest Russian vodka worked wonders. Nikolai informed me that Raisa was former KGB, ruthless, dangerous, and known to use seduction as a weapon. Actually, she didn't sound all yes. that bad. Familiar, even. Oh, damn! Yeah. Thanks, Nikolai. Masvidanya. Excuse me. Yes, sir. How can I help you? Give me the ring. I'm sorry, sir, but this is a flower stand, not a jewelry store. Yes, I'm not blind. I can see that. I want my ring. I'd like a ring, too. Diamond, preferably. A sapphire might be nice, too. Look, give me the goddamn ring. The ring that Richter left with you. It's mine. I'm Dr. Dorian Henry. Excuse me. Yes? For you, Dr. Dorian Henry. Who is this? Where are you? I think she's in the hotel. Um, what did you say? Ah, um, would you mind saying that again? Oh, a fascinating little device. Thank you so much. <laughs> Maria! She's dangerous. Yes, yes. You have five minutes to decide, Dr. Henry, and then your diskette goes on the auction block to the highest bidder. So, with one crushing right hand, Maria accomplished a great deal. The diskette was recovered, Raisa apprehended, and I was spared a bullet through one or another part of my anatomy. But there was still a great deal of excitement to come. Later, when we looked back on this case, Willie and I asked ourselves why we both ended up caring so much about Trisha after all the trouble she caused us. We never did come up with a precise answer. What will they do to him, Willie? Actually, I think your statement helped a lot. Krauser seemed inclined to let Herbert off lightly. Underneath all that bluster, the inspector is a real romantic. 
Still, it was a dumb stunt. Love makes you do dumb things. Haven't you found that? Not really. Neither did Dorian, come to think of it. There was a time that I loved him very much. He used to be a very kind, very caring man. I'm sorry. I wish I could help. I think you already have. Valentine, too. Still, to survive in the game for any length of time, one has to develop excellent instincts about people. Learn to trust his gut feelings. And on that level, at least, Willie and I both understood exactly why Herbert Langer loved her so much. Would you have anything smaller? These are fabulous. Thank you, Mrs. Henry. Not again. This time, you're coming with me. <laughs> After Trisha was kidnapped, Willie and I went looking for Dr. Henry. We had a lot of hard questions to ask him. And from the expression on Willie's face, I knew this time the whole truth would definitely be forthcoming. All right, who are they? Gone mad, I don't know what you're talking about. Trisha's been kidnapped from outside this hotel, and Willie thinks you know who did it. Well, I don't. That's supposed to be your department, isn't it? You're lying, Dr. Henry, and I'm getting very impatient. Uh, Willie, perhaps there's a better way. What are you doing? Well, first, I'm planning to turn this disquette into a lump of molten polymer, and then I'm thinking of taking your precious camera ring and throwing it far out onto the Kudam under the wheels of a tour bus. Good idea, do you think, Willie? It's very. He wouldn't dare. Oh, yes, he would. Actually, he's quite mad. No! No! It's Ronnie Hansen and his lunatic brother Thad. They used to be my research assistants. So why have they kidnapped Trisha? Well, Hansen claims that they deserve credit for half the camera's design. He's trying to pressure me into announcing a shared patent application tonight. So after your presentation, ownership copyright is irrefutable? Yes. How valid are their claims? How valid? Well, they used to be around the lab from the beginning, that's all. Look, the seminal research is all mine, and the patent is all mine. Oh, look, my whole career is on the line here, and there's no way those two semi-illiterate buffoons are going to be part of the bargain. We'd better let Krauser know about this, Willie. Hello? I would guess that you'll take me seriously now, won't you, Dr. Henry? I'm sorry, I think you have the wrong number. I did not order room service. Don't you understand? We've got your wife. Yes, we'll do whatever you have to do to get the problem solved. Who is this? Well, who's this? Put Trisha Henry on. She's fine. For the moment, at least. Sorry, Ronnie. Dr. Henry, according to my watch, you make your presentation in less than an hour. If you don't announce a shared copyright tonight, then your wife, shall we say, suffers the consequences. Never, Hanson. You don't Hansen. get anything. You're a Hansen. loser. Do you hear me? From the sound of that guy's voice, he's right on the edge. You're right. Let's find Trisha. The question is, where is she? Dr. Henry. I don't know. I swear it, I don't know. I tell you, he's bluffing. No, he's not. Come on, Valentin. You better hope we're good at what we're doing. Because if something happens to Trisha, we'll be back. Keep her here till I get back. Ronnie, are you sure? We... Of course I'm bloody sure. That bastard stole our life, Thad. No, I meant... Are you sure we ate the last of the beef jerky?
Mum always said he was the highly strung one. The only call to Dr. Henry's room in the last two hours was from 555-9898. Well, can't you reverse the number and get us an address? Here it is. That's very strange. What is? The address is Friedrichstraße 158. That's here. That's the Grand Hotel. So they've got her in the hotel somewhere. Well, that makes sense in an odd, twisted sort of way. Is there an extension list? Extension 2931, sub-basement. Machine room number two, level A1. Oh, Rudy, find Mitch. Go to Dr. Henry's room and wait there until we get back. Some brain food. Hands up. Drop it. Oh, shoot, I'm flat. How'd you turn this off? It must be broken. No. Now it's broken. The other brother. Oh, he just left. Dorian stole the micro camera design from them. I mean, these guys may be a bit wacky, but Dorian's a common thief. Are you certain? I'm positive. They proved to me how they were in the lab with him the entire time. And after that last phone call, Ronnie just completely snapped. I think he's gonna go kill Dorian. No great loss. Gotta stop it, Valentin. Testing, one, two. Not yet, you idiot. And when I tell you, try to get it on the screen. You can forget it, pal, and you can run your own damn projector for your presentation if you don't like my Abe. Doesn't matter, Mitch, there isn't gonna be a presentation. Hey, might as well go and get that cup of cocoa. <clears throat> what the hell are you talking about? As your security advisors, we can't allow it. Now, Ronnie Hansen's loose in the hotel, and he has every intention of killing you, Dr. Henry. And I told you before, he doesn't have the nerve, but I do. Sorry, Doc. Little change in plans. I came for the ring and the schematics. Not till after the presentation. No, now. You see, I just got off the phone with a former contact of mine in the Middle East. He's willing to give me cold cash on the barrel head. The hell with the patent ownership. Sorry, Doc. You lose. Our deal is null and void. I always knew under that slimy exterior, Shanley, beat the heart of a true reptile. Flattery will get you nowhere, Rinko. Hand it over, Doc. It's over! <laughs> case drew to its final curtain, I began to realize I was going to miss these people and this place. But I suppose that's the sign of a genuinely cathartic experience. And, of course, the basis for another chapter in Valentin Renko, Memoirs of a Spy. You know, my life is going to be very dull without you, Trisha. <laughs> Somehow I rather doubt that. It's real strange to be out on my own again after all these years. You'll do fine, both of you. <gasps> oh, Willie, I knew underneath it all you were the real romantic. Thank you. Oh, and you 
Until then, I'm going to kill you. Goodbye, Trisha. So where's Rudy? Right here, will you? I'm coming. You know, I was wondering, what about the Baroness back taxes? Actually, the Hanson brothers were so grateful about the way things turned out, they offered us a percentage of the patent profits. If they're found to be mentally competent, that is. <laughs> oh, that's great. But now, let me see if I have the chain of events clear in my mind. Dr. Henry stole the design for the micro camera from the Hansen brothers. His plan was to make his official presentation, then sell the patent rights immediately to a pre-designated buyer. Rudy, do the details really matter that much? What do you mean? What Willie meant was that in the end, the bad guys got caught. Rudy made a lot of new and interesting friends, love conquered all, and they lived happily ever after. End chapter 14.